What's up, Navigating Academia family? I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I wanted to make this short video because I got a very interesting comment on the channel the other day, and I think it's an important thing to be able to address, especially given kind of contemporary things and issues that are going on in terms of racial and ethnic diversity. So essentially, the comment said that there was a, a young individual who had applied for graduate school, uh, and unfortunately, they had been rejected from all the programs that they had applied to. Uh, and the individual's comment said something along the lines of, uh, they're not getting into graduate school because of racial and ethnic issues and saying that I essentially the comments said, quote unquote, uh, I guess I just didn't meet the demographic profile. So I think this is really important to address. And the reason I think it's important to address is that there's a fundamental misunderstanding behind what gets you into graduate school and what gets you into undergrad, especially I'm here in the United States, especially in terms of the United States. So essentially, all I want to say about this is that when you're dealing with undergraduate admissions, where there's kind of a formal, oftentimes like a school of admissions, a massive admissions uh, committee, gigantic, and their job is to be able to create, if nothing else, a representative class, like a cohort that you're going to be going through your entire undergraduate career with. And I think that's super cool and super understandable that they value diversity and they're trying to generate a diverse class. And this diversity can take all types of forms. It can take uh, into consideration things like your location, so your geography. It can take into consideration things, yes, like racial and ethnic diversity, gender identity diversity, you name it. They're trying to come up with a diverse class, diverse set of interests. Maybe you're interested in psychology. Maybe you're interested in anthropology. Maybe you're interested in biology or engineering. All of these things are very important in terms of developing a, a cohort, a group that you're going to be going through your undergraduate years with. Graduate school, guys, is completely different. It's totally understandable if you've gotten, let's say, you guys know if you watch the channel, I call them the five lies, right? And the five lives, lies are if you have like an A average, if you have, and this individual, that was their big selling point is that they said, you know, I had an A average in my bachelor's degree in psychology, so I thought I would get a spot. I uh, have to understand that acceptance rates are really low these days. And because of that, only having good grades, only having good test scores, only having good letters of recommendation or having research experience or clinical experience. Trust me, I think it's awesome doing that. But you need to understand that in contemporary acceptance, right, acceptance rates are so low that when it comes to admissions, uh, your likelihood of getting in is no better than anybody else if you have all five of those things. If you watch the channel, you're going to know that the things that I have seen in my, I can't believe, 17-year career, guys, that's like getting old over here, right? But in academia and being on that side of being on admissions committees, essentially is that the things that really make you stand out are number one, no doubt, is personal connections. Number two is publications. And number three, especially if it's a research program, as opposed to an in-field kind of applied program. Um, but it does help with applied programs as well. And number three, which is kind of, yeah, it gives you a little bit of a bump, but nowhere near the same. Like it's not even in the same category, but it would make you stand out, right? Uh, relative to individuals who don't have them is conference presentations, particularly conference uh, papers, but conference posters will be fine as well only at particular conferences as well. It can't be like some generic conference. It has to be something that is known, liked, and trusted by the other individuals in your field. But the, the basic thing here, everyone, is that no, they're not trying to create a racial and ethnically diverse cohort in graduate school. That's not a thing. And it's really easy in this day and age. It's taking the easy way out to say that that's the reason that anybody was rejected from a graduate program. Uh, guys, I've dealt with so many people and I've had the pleasure of working with so many of you over the past three years that this channel has existed. So many of you have come when you've been rejected from graduate school and you're saying, Dr. Singh, what do I do now? Where do I go? What do I do? This was not in my life plan to be rejected and now it's happened. And I had all five of those things, the five big things or what I thought the big things were, and I still didn't get in. And I'm really discouraged. I'm even depressed sometimes. I'm certainly anxious about what my next steps are. What do I do? And so obviously, and you guys are welcome to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. We can go through this stuff for you. Even if you've gotten into grad school, 
you know, what's the strategy that we want to take? Look at this, we got some entertainment in terms of Ryder. Apparently this video is sponsored by Ryder. Um, in terms of this truck behind me. Uh, but this is the thing, is that it is a cop-out to say that you didn't get in because of racial and ethnic diversity. I guarantee you, we don't care about that. Graduate schools don't care about that. Uh, what we care about is not a diverse class. Everyone can be an ethnic minority. Everyone can be in the ethnic majority group. That is not what we care about. We don't have quotas. That's not a thing. We want the best of the best talent who have the things that are going to make our lives as graduate supervisors easier. We want to pick the people most likely to make a significant dent in the universe. And we want the people that we can train to be able to make high level differences in the field, whatever field that happens to be. We do not care about racial and ethnic diversity in terms of having quotas in these things. All right. So please do not allow yourself to use that easy out because it's really easy in this day and age to say that everybody is being wronged if they get rejected for racial and ethnic reasons. Doesn't matter if you're a racial and ethnic minority or if you're in the majority group, whatever country you happen to be in. Okay. It makes life way too simple. I remember when I was growing up, my father, there was a few times, I've definitely encountered racism in my life, depending on the country I was living in, certainly in the U.S., countries like Switzerland, uh, and especially in rural parts of Switzerland, less so in the cities, as you can understand, more diversity there. But still, uh, racism is a very real thing I've encountered in my own life, in my family's life. Uh, but it's something where it is too easy to blame uh, the preponderance of things on racial injustice or ethnic injustice. It's very important. I, of course, I definitely think that in certain areas of my life, I've had to work significantly harder than individuals in the racial majority groups of the countries that I've lived in uh, to be able to get ahead. And sometimes, yes, I've definitely felt left out. But the key thing is what you're going to do about it. And what I have found is that the best way to be able to tackle a system, especially a complex system like academia, is to be able to play the game, get in there, and change it from the inside. So when it comes to things like Publication Academy, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to essentially build a system where the power and the knowledge that you need to succeed in academia is not held by a small minor minority, but is accessible to major the majority of individuals. doesn't matter if you're 20 years old and you want to publish or if you're 90 and you want to publish. I want you to have the skill sets at your fingertips if you are passionate enough to desire that sort of skill set. And the ability to publish and get your thoughts out there and your research out there. Uh, so in any case, everybody, I just want to make this little video for you. I'm sorry if the uh, uh, my video is kind of going up and down. I'm just holding it in my hands right now. But I think that this was a really important thing to be able to address. So have a great day, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye-bye.